Are you having trouble sleeping? So am I. So are one in five of us, ever since COVID made us worried about getting sick, infecting other people, worry about our jobs, worried about our businesses. Worry, worry, worry equals insomnia. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Goldman. I'm the host of the weekly health podcast, The Dose. I also happen to be a veteran insomniac. I've, uh, you know, when I, was a, when I was a teenager, I had trouble falling asleep and into my 20s and 30s, I had trouble staying asleep and I've tried everything. And what I'm gonna tell you are five tips that I found out over the years can help you uh, have a better night's sleep and stay asleep uh, and get some relief from this curse of insomnia. Tip number one, prepare your bedroom for sleep. So first of all, uh, the bedroom is for mostly for sleeping, but it's certainly not for doing work and it's not for bringing in screens like smartphones and tablets because they emit blue light and that makes it harder for you to sleep, uh, fall asleep and stay asleep. You may like it warm, but I gotta tell you that your body prefers a colder temperature. So turn the thermostat down a little bit. That'll make it more comfortable for you to sleep. It's easier to, to get under the covers and warm up than it is to try to take covers off and, and try to cool down. The other thing that I do, and this comes not only from having insomnia, you know, I, for many years I've, I've been bothered by morning light. It makes me wake up early. Uh, also, uh, uh, as a veteran uh, ER physician, I've done lots of night shifts and there are times when I've had to sleep during the daytime. I do two things. First of all, I wear nightshades over my eyes to shield, uh, to, to block out some of the light. The other thing that I do is I have blackout curtains uh, over the windows, which uh, get rid of all of the daytime light and, and really make the room dark, as, as dark as, as, as the darkest part of the night during the middle of the day. Tip number two, cut out the noise. A lot of people who have trouble staying asleep or falling asleep are bothered by all kinds of noises in the middle of the night. So the first thing that I do is I wear a set of comfortable foam earplugs. They're the kinds you get on, on flights. You can buy them, you, know, you can get a pack of, of a dozen or two dozen of these and you just put them in each ear like that. They're, don't put them in too deeply uh, because then it's just hard to remove them and, and, and I find that that cuts out a lot of the noise. In addition to that, I do something else. Um, because I'm bothered by noises that come and go, um, I use a machine um, that's basically a white noise machine. It's, it's quite simple. It, it, it's, like a, it's like a fan. It's a fan noise. That's what it sounds like. And you can, you can adjust it um, to sound a little bit different. What this does is it produces a kind of a layer of white noise that masks out the sound of the furnace going on and off, the air conditioner going on and off, if there's passers-by outside that are having a conversation. I, I won't hear any of that. Uh, and, and um, you know, some people um, recommend using an app that produces white noise. The problem with that is that the app is attached to a smartphone or a tablet, and I've already said I, I wouldn't take those into your bedroom because they're too stimulating. They emit blue light, which disturbs your sleep. So I like this machine instead. I really can't sleep tonight. And I got three more tips for you. Let's go. Tip number three, reset your body clock. The first thing you need to do is set a regular schedule so that you're going to bed at the same time and you're waking up at the same time each morning. That means that if you have trouble falling asleep at night, uh, it means each and every day you should try to go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time each morning. And that means on weekends you shouldn't let yourself sleep in. Because if you sleep in on the weekend, it's gonna make it that much harder to fall asleep at the time you wanna fall asleep on Sunday night and you won't be able to get yourself ready for the rest of the week. The other thing you shouldn't do is nap during the day. If you nap long periods of time during the day, you're gonna sap your sleep deprivation that you're gonna to need to help you fall asleep. So those are some of the things you can do without any kind of sleep aids. If you do want a sleep aid, the one that I recommend is melatonin. Uh, melatonin is a naturally occurring substance. It's produced in the brain by your pineal gland and it is triggered by light and darkness. Uh, so around about two o'clock every morning, under the cover of darkness, your, your brain's pineal gland secretes melatonin and what that does is it resynchronizes or resets your body clock 
so that you sleep for the rest of the night and then you wake up hopefully refreshed and ready to go uh, during the daytime. This is a totally naturally occurring product. Um, unfortunately, some people either don't make enough melatonin or don't produce it at the, right, at the right time. So what you can do is something that I do. I take three milligrams of melatonin. Uh, it, you can buy it at a, at a pharmacy or you can buy it at a health food store. Uh, and I take it about an hour before I go to bed. Some people would recommend taking it closer to that two o'clock in the morning time uh, when your brain is secreting it naturally, but you know, I'm not gonna wake up at two o'clock to take melatonin. So I take it about an hour before I go to bed. It helps me sleep and it helps me feel more refreshed the next morning. Tip number four, know when to quit. I can tell you that for those times when I'm sleep deprived, um, I fall asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. And the sleep experts tell us that if you fall asleep within two or three or four minutes of your head hitting the pillow, you're sleep deprived. Now, you know, a lot of us uh, veteran insomniacs use sleep deprivation as a way to help us sleep every night, which is probably not a healthy way to go. So for most normal people, when they try to fall asleep, um, it usually takes them anywhere from 15 to 20 or 25 minutes to fall, to fall asleep. The problem with me is that I'm a natural worry ward. I have a PhD in worrying. And I can tell you that, that you know, if I didn't prepare myself to go to, go to bed, if uh, I had an argument or I had some, some stress or some tension before, before I went to bed or I watched a TV program or read something that was just a little too stimulating, um, I might be trying to go to bed before I'm ready to go to sleep. And, and so somewhere around 15, 16, or 17 minutes after I've, I've started, I've put my head down I've, uh, on the pillow and I've turned out the lights, I'm starting to think, hmm, this ain't happening. I'm not falling asleep. And I start to worry. Oh, what if it turns into 18 minutes and I can't sleep? What if it's 19? What if it's 20 minutes? And, and you know, a lot of people who, who have trouble falling asleep, let it turn into 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, and they're getting more and more worried because they're starting to think, what the heck's gonna happen to me tomorrow morning if I don't get a good night's sleep? Well, make a rule for yourself, 20 minutes. At the 20 minute mark, if I, ha if I can feel it, I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to sleep, I get up and I leave the room. And what I will do is I'll go downstairs, I'll leave the bedroom, and, and at that point, you know, the kinds of things that work for me are things that kind of dial down the stress and the, and the, uh, and the stimulation. So I'll read a, a chapter from a book that I've already read. So I kind of know what's going to happen and I'm not going, gee, I wonder what's going to happen next. Or I might watch uh, a TV show on the PVR that I've already seen and I kind of know what happens. So I'm not excited about what's going to happen next because I've seen it. So that's one thing or two things that I can do. Sometimes all the other techniques don't work. You need a couple of fail safes. So I have two of them for you. Um, the first one is uh, vigorous exercise. I've been running for decades and it's my go-to when I can't sleep, when I'm anxious, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I've got a lot of pent up energy and, and no amount of talking to myself, no amount of melatonin, no amount of any of the other strategies is gonna work. So what I'll do in, in, in those instances is I'll suit up in my jogging gear and I'll go out for a long run. And I run, you know, especially during COVID, I've been running 10 kilometers three times a week. It's, it's my go-to exercise for burning out stress, for getting rid of stress. And, and it leaves you with that kind of glow, that kind of endorphin rush. You know, at the end of it, I'll, I'll, I'll bring, you know, my, uh, my earbuds and I'll, I'll listen to a podcast or an audio book or something like that. And, and, uh, and there's nothing like vigorous exercise to burn off that energy that, that, that uh, may be getting in the way of you, of you falling asleep. And, and usually I find that if I exercise at that time of day, first thing in the morning or before, you know, before the sunrise, that uh, I'll be exhausted but happy for most of the day and and I'm usually able to fall asleep more easily that that night. Sometimes, you know, I'm nursing a running injury or the weather is just too inclement and I can't go out and 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 do that kind of vigorous exercise. And what I'll do then is I'll just think of it as stolen time. I'll uh, actually go to my desk and start doing some work. And the reason why I do that is is that sometimes when it comes to insomnia, you have to turn lemons into lemonade. You know, I gotta tell you, if you have never experienced the calm of twilight, the time when nobody's awake, when nobody's walking outside, when it's just you and your thoughts, your deep thoughts, um, 
you should try it sometimes. I'm not recommending it. I'm not recommending insomnia, but you should try it sometimes because, because you, you'll be amazed that, that this moment that you think of as a bad time can actually be turned into a good time. I'm really tired. I hope those five tips helped you. Sweet dreams.